Aloha, gang. Aloha, aloha, aloha. Welcome to the 23rd annual Nell and Charlie Show tonight, coming to you live from Parts Unknown. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I got my camera set up, my phone set up. I got everything set up, man. I got my Hungry Hawaiian shirt. You guys haven't been to Hunger Hawaiian there out there in Oahu? Go check it out. My cousin Rick, he's been on our show. Local uh, products, Lihing Mui and Mango and all of that good stuff. Hungry Hawaiian guys. No, we're not sponsored by the Hungry Hawaiian, but go check them out. Anyway, you know, let me start off, Charlie, real quick by saying, you know, I I know it was just a week ago. It was just a week ago, or, or maybe actually two weeks ago where um, I told everyone that we were gonna start the transition and that we were going to probably go to a one show week and everybody, guys, we love you guys so much. I know Charlie and I got messages. Please don't, please, we need you guys. We need you guys. And, and, and I listen, I am not, please do not start that thread going. Uh, this, is not, this is not about that. It's, we felt we were at a place, although Charlie and I from months and months and months and months and months and months ago, uh, predicted what was going to happen. I, again, not to brag, just saying our experts that we bring on the show, our friends and our connections that we communicate with almost on a daily basis warned us of this. So, but nonetheless, the numbers were down. Uh, we were opening up. Everything was going well. We felt that the transition needed to occur because we found ourselves talking about the same thing night after night after night. Well, lo and behold, um, exactly what we thought happened. And uh, so, as we said uh, two weeks ago, that we were going to transition to a one show a week. However, if the need arose, if we had guests that uh, were able to come on and share new information, that we would make it happen. And that's what we're doing tonight. Tonight, actually, we're going to have Dr. Altenberg on tonight. Uh, to share his modeling, which he showed last night. If you guys watched it, you know what I'm talking about. It was on the uh, Hale Hawaii, uh, hawaiicovid.org. Put it on, but it was on the Hale Hawaii. I shared it on, on my page last night. But, but I didn't want to shortchange him. Tonight we have the show on PBS with the four mayors. I did not want to take away from that. So we're going to go for about a half an hour, 40 minutes tonight, just to talk story. Um, and then tomorrow night we'll have Dr. Altenberg on with his model, with his hypotheses, with his predictions. And I think you're gonna love that. I think, I, think, uh, I, I wish the government would listen to him uh, because he is a scientist. He knows what he's talking about. That's what he does. And I'm gonna show some highlights of last night's show. Tonight, I'm gonna show you the numbers uh, just for those of you that weren't able, weren't able to, to watch it last night. But, you know, let me ask you, what is that of uh, the four mayors about today? I, I'm assuming it's going to be about COVID. Um, it was, I don't, this was planned before the case numbers today. I'm assuming that tonight's discussion is going to be about what's going on right now. I hope so. I hope it's not a political speech. Thank you. I love you. Uh, we, we're doing such a great job. I hope not. But, you know, Charlie, if, 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 if it warrants a post show that we come back on after that, uh, you know, it's okay too. But I, I just didn't, I don't know what it's going to be about. It's, I mean, it's going to be about COVID. Well, it's going to be uh, about. I'm, I'm going to make a stand. I'm going to stay on tonight. And I'm going to stay right through the show. Because I think there's a lot of important information that we must share with our viewers. But first of all, I would like to address this issue that I've, I've got some comments about Uncle Charlie. Something wrong with your eyes. No, a lot of people said, I always look tired. So I forced myself to look like, see, do I look tired now? This is the real me. I'm not tired. I'm going to be like this all night. Well, I, 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 let me just say this, Charlie, again. And this is not, not to... Uh, I hate to say things that, that people are going to think we, we're asking for sympathy. Or, no, we're not. You know, we're not. But I'm going to tell you, you know, Charlie, of course, he's working now. But we spend a lot of time on this. And that's why it really infuriates us when, when take, people take pot shots at us. And hey, we're very professional. We're not going... Every so often I might go off the handle, but most, for most of the time, I, you know what? It is what it is, man. I'm like duck feathers, you know, the water just roll off. But I, I think, you know, people need to know that we, we, when, we, when we have our show and we, we share information, it's not information that Mel and Charlie go have lunch 
or coffee and we say, hey, bro, what are we going to talk about tonight? Uh, I don't know. Bro, let's go. Let's go plant this seed of bullshit. Let's go plant this seed of bullshit for our viewers. No, man, that's not what's happening. What, what's happening is, I don't know, how many emails today from Dr. Miskovich? We, we are in constant contact with the experts that our government chooses not to listen to. That's fine. And we just want to share that with you guys. And, and that's all it is. So I, I know, Charlie, when the numbers came out today, if you watched Dr. Uh, Altenberg's presentation last night, you saw, and, I, and I'll put it up on the screen in a little bit, and we can share it, but it, it actually happened sooner than he thought or he predicted. Um, so tomorrow night, he's going to, uh, you know, he's going to redo the numbers, and we'll get a much better uh model we'll get a much better explanation of what's going on in hawaii right now so i cannot wait and i just wish that our governor our lieutenant governor uh some of our mayors would actually would actually be objective stop being the politicians for a while and be objective listeners and take the appropriate action so what are your thoughts today charlie well i mean i'm sure you weren't surprised i mean this we've been talking about this for a very long time but what was your initial reaction, sir? Well, it, it, it's hard to get stimulated over something like this, only because it's like, okay, try telling me something that I didn't know. <laughs> and, and that's what it was. So let me, let me put something into, into context of how I feel. You know when there's a large brush fire and you get all these warnings, dry brush, don't make campfires, whatever, right? So we had a brush fire and some people are so enthused in trying to get back and say, hey, I wanna go roast some marshmallows. I'm gonna make a brush fire right by those dry brush over there. And what we're saying is, no, you can't because this is brush fire season. No, I can't. No, you can't. And they go and they start a big fire now the fire's out of control. Now they go, hey, why aren't you putting out the fire? Are oh, you dumb knucklehead? We told you to make fire in the first place, right? That's where we're at. Because gang, remember we've been saying all along, because there's this danger of how some, some of our politicians slash medical individuals are carrying on, it seems quite evident that they could care less if they think spread or not. So if you wanna lift uh, mass mandates, if you wanna do away with all of this, you, you already did away with the, uh, the pretest screening and all that, right? So you relied on a vaccination card. Before you even wanna do that, they prove to me you can stop what we already have. If anything, you've allowed it to get bigger, okay? A reasonable thinking individual, you don't have to be a doctor to know this. If I get a cold, I will take something to hold that cold down so the cold doesn't get worse. These guys are saying, hey, let it get worse because that's how you build up herd immunity. We infect a lot of people so this thing not can go wrong. You know what? Your theory is totally bogus because why are vaccinated people now getting ill or why are vaccinated people getting this virus now you can say well they're not any up, up in hospital if you say that on a stack of bibles that i gonna get you to meet some people that actually work in a hospital and they got a totally different story to tell you okay but i think everyone has been warned not to say anything and they can't because of hipaa but you know what the obvious is there, whether you want to accept it or not. And that is what's happening. So that's my, if you want to call it a rant or rave, you know, you know, nowadays, Mel, it's hard for me to get really upset because I went through this class, it's called de-escalation. And what I learned to de-escalate, you have to escalate first. Then the de-escalation, right. then the de-escalation can work. That because if true. you have nothing to de-escalate, then, then you're boring. You just stay in your corner and just wait for something to happen. Well, you know, 
I tell you why I get frustrated and Charlie, and I, I know you do too. And, um, you know what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, they, the Lieutenant governor was out there urging the governor to lift the mask mandates, allow everyone to go in, vaccinated people, take off your masks. We're safe. You know, today we had a, a breakthrough case that died. We had a breakthrough case that died. Um, that's right out of the Department of Health, 60-year-old. Uh, and, and <clears throat> of course, the news says, well, well, we don't really know if COVID caused the death. You know, media, knock it off. See, the media is another problem that we have because they're putting out crappy information. Just be real with the people. So now the governor, lieutenant governor, a couple of weeks ago is out there telling everybody, right, because it's a political season has started, that I'm fighting for your freedoms. And today he's on the news tonight saying, I'm concerned. Guys, mask up. Everybody should be masking up. And please, for the next two weeks, take a time out. Don't go to any gatherings. Please, guys, we, we, we got to stop there. Now, all of a sudden, the concern, even though he was being advised by many, many, many health experts, including his, only, his, only, uh, his own Department of Health, all of a sudden now, again, locals don't go gatherings. Mask up everywhere you go. Uh, excuse me. And, you know, you know, they allow him to do this. They, they continue. The media allows him to do this. And, uh, and, and that's where it's dangerous. And I've been saying this for a long time. I, you know, no one calls them out except the Mel and Charlie show. And yeah, we get hate emails for that. Yeah, we get hate texts for that. Whatever. The truth is the truth. Now, you know, we had a, a little discussion in one of my posts today about, hey, Mel, it's not the visitors. I, you know, I'm not I, travelers, guys travelers it's not the visitors i'm not gonna i'm tired of saying this already visitors aren't getting tested if you have five local resident returning residents and five visitors 10 people and let's say three of the re returning residents test positive that's 60 percent but none of the uh, visitors test because they don't need to they're not getting sick because they're not here long enough to get sick and get symptoms enough where they got to go to the doctor so none of the visitors are testing positive, right? Because we're not testing them. Now, so you end up with 60% of the cases were returning residents. Okay, if you tested all 10, if you tested all 10, there's a damn good chance. See, there's no difference between a returning resident from Vegas and a, and a resident from Vegas flying to Hawaii and a, and a, a re resident that lives in Vegas flying to Hawaii. What the hell is the difference? So, so now if you tested five and five and three and three, all of a sudden the numbers change. So, you know, media, state, stop putting out the crap that it's all the returning residents, it's all the locals. We're not testing the visitors. All returning residents, in my opinion, all travelers, returning travelers, visitors, whatever, we need to test them. They're not getting tested and that's why their numbers don't show up when they when they get sick they're back in the mainland or if they get the sniffles they ain't going to the doctor I, I, I mean i'm repeating myself again so you know they use the numbers to their advantage to to put out this fake story that it's the locals that we got to get vaccinated we all know we got to get vaccinated people we gave away money we gave away trips we gave away hotels we gave away everything we were at the pl plateau now so we got to uh, tell your friends and family and loved ones that they need to get vaccinated. But un until that happens, uh, we got to be careful. And, and as long as we allow that, that flow of visitors, returning residents to come in untested, this number is not going to stop. It's not. So uh, I, I'm just frustrated, as you can tell, because you, when you listen to the media again, it's always the locals. They're telling the locals no, no. Don't gather with your family and your friends. Not one mention. The only thing they mention about tourists, the visitors is only 2% of the visitors. Well, because you're not testing them. Test them at the same rate. And then let's, let's compare numbers, governor, lieutenant governor, all of you. So anyway, Charlie, I'm going to, I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to put up that screen real quick because mm -hmm. I, I really want to share with you guys. And I'm, I'll be real quick, okay? 
This was Dr. Lee Altenberg's, uh, Altenberg's model that he put up last night. You see this, you'll see the whole explanation tomorrow night at seven o'clock. Mireille, about the schools, no gatherings, exactly. In a couple of weeks, we're gonna send students back to gatherings in schools, in classrooms without ventilation. And uh, the 12, under 12s will be all unvaccinated, 100% unvaccinated environment, but that's gonna happen. And as Dr. Miskovic said, when that happens, all hell is going to break loose. All hell is going to break loose. Anyway, so guys, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, without the graphs, I'm just gonna go real quick. The RT is the number uh, of, of infections that one infected person will put out. So if you look at the top number, 1.34, one infected person in, a, in, a, in, a, in an environment with 60% vaccine rate, meaning 60% of the people in that community is vaccinated and mediation, meaning that you have social distancing, you have mask mandates, you have all of these things to protect. The RT, the, the transmission rate is 1.34. So one infected person will, will infect 1.34 people. So he used the 100 cases because when he put these numbers together, that's where we were at. We were at about an average of 100 cases a day. With the 60% vaccination rate and the mediation in place, the social distancing, the masks and all of that, his prediction was that by the start of school, the first week of August, we would hit the 200 cases, that the case count would double. And by the end of August, if nothing changes, we would be at 800 cases per day. That's with 60% vaccination and all the mediation measures in place, all the simple measures in place. Now, if we go to 60%, remember now, the Lieutenant Governor is trying to get the governor to lift up restrictions earlier before 70%. So if you go to 60% vaccination rate without any restrictions, the RT goes up to 1.485 one infected person will infect 1.485 people. Same 100 cases, but by the start of school, we would have probably about 215, 220 cases. But by the end of August, we'd be up to 2,000 cases a day. 2,000 cases a day. And then he did an analysis of, you see, we talk about 60%, and Charlie, we have spoken about this for months now. You cannot use a 60% because it's an average. So let's say in a community that, that has only 40% vaccination rate. And we talk, look at the states in the, in the United States in the, in the country that are at 30 and 40%. But let's say you took a community and let's say that community had about 10 cases a month, I mean a day, 10 cases a day. Um, and, and, the, the, and the vaccination rate was only 40% for whatever reason. And you had the mediation, you had the mask mandates, you had the social distancing, the gatherings and all of that. That 10 cases, just with that, with that drop of 20% vaccination rate, by August, by the start of school, we would be at 500 cases. Remember now, this is off of 10 cases. That's the exponential growth of this virus. So at the end of, uh, at the start of school, if nothing changes in a, in a community with 40% vaccine rate and, a, and an average of 10 cases a day, they would be up to 500 cases a day. And by the end of August, 8,000 cases a day. Now you can sit there and tell me this is fear mongering or this is, I'm trying to scare you away. I am just sharing with you what Dr. Altenberg's model showed. Now, look at the numbers today. Dr. Altenberg had no idea that today's cases was gonna be well over 200. He didn't predict that till the beginning of school, the, the second week of August or, or yeah, August 6th or whatever it is. And already the, vi the variant has outrun his model. So he'll be on tomorrow night at seven o'clock. I hope you guys can join us. Please share. I'm gonna post up the announcement later tonight. Please share that. I want everyone, including our governor and Lieutenant governor to watch that. This is nothing to mess around with. These numbers are, are, are numbers. And again, 200 plus cases today. He didn't predict that till, till August. So we are behind the eight ball and we need to be careful. Yeah, there you have it, Charlie. I know you weren't able to watch it last night, but that's it. That, that's the model. That's not a politician. That's not someone trying to 
You get elected. That is a doctor, a scientist, uh, uh, certified man. This guy, he, 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 that's what he does. So you take it for what I, just, I just want to be uh, um, on point about something. Someone mentioned and they asked if, if this is a real time figure that was used today in the number count, it may be old. You know, whether it's real time or old within this week, the numbers still should not have reached the levels that it did. Correct. If we had testing in place, if we still had our testing or pre-test requirements at the borders coming into the islands. And if anyone wants to debate about it, fine. Because if you say that, no, it's in, it's in our communities, okay? Then the question is, how do we rid our communities of this? Because if you don't have a solution for that, it's gonna, basically you're gonna get a double whammy. You'll have it in a community, ravaging the community, and you'll be having it brought in. And it's like a fuel that every time it ravages, you got more fuel adding on to that. Ravage some more, some more fuel adding on to that. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. So that and that's the reason why when you go fishing, right? Or when you try, even if you're trying to stop something, you have to make sure that you got it, a seamless chain that goes right across that can't be broken. We've already broken that by allowing people to come back, both residents and non-residents to come back to the islands without having to take a test. The only unfortunate thing is when we're talking about our residents, they have a vested interest because this is their home. They get sick, they go to the doctor, they go to the doctor, bingo, they turn up positive. Okay. The travelers who don't consider this home, but who are here just to visit, they feel a little sore throat, nothing pressing, they go home, they can get really ill back home. But why are they here? They're sharing the aloha with all of you, especially for those who cannot get vaccinated. They're sharing the aloha, and guess what? You get stuck with all the opala, okay? You Hawaiians know what I'm talking about. So let's share with everybody. What is opala? We get stuck with the rubbish. That's how it happens. Yeah. And. And then that's, that's what we've been trying to say is that, you know, yeah, you, you remember, if you don't test, you're not going to get the numbers. We don't even know what the real numbers are. And, um, you know, more, more cases cause more illness, cause more deaths. That's just, that's just the way this thing works. Yeah, you got a lot of people that will survive. And I know a lot of people are running behind saying, yeah, but it's only 99%, uh, it's 99% safe or whatever. I mean, no, listen, go tell that to the family of the person that died today that was vaccinated. And, uh, and the other two people that died today as well. We'll tell that to the families. Uh, you guys just pulled the wrong number, guys. No, and then go talk to the, the long haulers who are suffering every single day of their lives. Yeah, they're not in the hospital, they're at home with oxygen tanks. Go, go tell them that. I, and, and if you wanna dispute the numbers uh, from Dr. Altenberg, don't post a, a YouTube video of some whack nut that is talking about how the government is scaring you into getting the vaccine. No, show me a study that he did. Find me the expert. Find me the expert that did a study that, that counters that. Please don't just post this YouTube crap all around the place of these yahoos that are, that are passing out crappy information and dangerous information. I, I listen, I, I'm not here to debate anybody. I'm here listening to experts and sharing. And if you gotta, honestly, if you have an expert that can uh, dispute what Dr. Altenberg did, I'm gonna tell you right now, after seeing the numbers today, I'm convinced that he knows what the hell he's doing. Um, and you know, I, I remember, you know, every day in the office, people ask, man, what do you think the number's gonna be today? Today I said, I'm probably close to 200, just based on knowing, you know, the cases we had yesterday and then you do the contact tracing and probably close to 200 I, you know while i was i was shocked um i knew this day would come i mean there, there was no no way this wasn't going to happen the way this in florida 420 percent increase in cases their hospitals are full and their gov governor sat on the podium today and told the audience i'm not i'm not putting the mask mandate back we're not doing that in florida whatever man not too much aloha for your residents, governor. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. 
um, I don't know what else. I don't know what else we can do to share or to convince people that this is real, this is dangerous. And um, the only way out of this really is the vaccine. And for those of you that cannot get the vaccine, we just pray that you guys can be safe and no one gives you that virus. Uh, again, we respect everybody's decision, but there are people out there, Charlie, 12 and uh, the under 12, all the kids, they cannot get the vaccine even if they wanted it. People that are on certain medications, certain health conditions cannot get the vaccine. And, and, and they're, at, they're at high risk. So I just, I just hope um, that you know, we keep pounding the drum and, and uh, we get through this with the least amount of illness and death as possible. So what do you think tomorrow? Do you think we'll be closer to 300? Uh, yeah, I would think it will be over 300 tomorrow. Um, you know, I, I, would, I would believe it would be over 300 tomorrow. Again, I am no expert, but uh, just, just looking at the, the, the way it jumped from the day before to yesterday, I mean, uh, to today, um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised that we wouldn't, you know, I mean, to hit 300, it's, we're, we're right there. Uh, I would say we'd be over 300 tomorrow. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Um, Brian Ingalls is saying between 275 and 300. Yeah, I, I mean, I would, you know, Brian is another analyst that is bright and has, is an amazing scientist that, you know, I, I just, for some reason, I'm saying probably about 320, 330 tomorrow. And I, that's, that's a, what they call a wild ass guess, but that's based on the numbers that we've seen and, um, and the fact that it's not going to change. Flight's still coming in. A lot of people coming in unvaccinated too, guys. Yeah, remember, we still got a bunch of people coming in unvaccinated and saying that they're going to quarantine. And those guys are out and about. There's no quarantine enforcement anymore. So, do you know how to I'm, you know I'm concerned. How to make a feel good? Huh? Yeah. I said, do you know how to make a situation feel good? Let's put out a number like 420. So if it comes below that, then, hey, we're doing pretty good. Yeah, that, that's good. That's good. By the way, tonight... Um, guys, on my page, if you just scroll down, go to my page and scroll down, you'll see the, the little thing from PBS. You can actually watch it on PBS, Channel 11 for, for, for me. I don't know about you guys. Uh, or you can watch it on the stream. They'll have it stream. I'm going to try to figure out how we can put that up um, uh, and see if we can share the stream on my Facebook page. Uh, you guys let us know. If you guys want to do a post show, um, let us know. Or you guys, if you guys are exhausted, and tired of hearing about this crap, let us know too. But uh, I don't have a problem coming back for another 15, 20 minutes to do a, a post show. Um, you know, I, I think that would be helpful. Uh, I have no idea what they're gonna talk about, but uh, I'll try to do a watch party. Um, if, if it's gonna be on Facebook, then we can do a watch party. But if they're doing a private streaming, like a Zoom or, or uh, some, other, some other software that we're not gonna be able to do it. So we'll try. Uh, we'll be checking out of here shortly so I can go try to get it set up. But um, I, I, you know, I just feel like if not, and again, I'm not, not, this is not to blow smoke up Charlie's Okole or mine, but I don't see the real information coming out. Uh, we'll have Dr. T on next week. We're locking down a date for Dr. T. Uh, we're going to try and get Dr. Murtaza back, Dr. Jerome Kim back. We're going to try to ramp this up because we, we think that this next few weeks coming up is going to be bad and we want to make sure that you guys are all equipped with the right information so that you can make right decisions or smart decisions so yeah i know it's tough it's tough it was getting kind of comfortable charlie that one night a week was getting kind of i was like kind of like lost a little bit but uh being able to catch up on some of the tv shows was pretty nice but right now i think it's it's critical that we get the right information out to all of you uh, and all we ask, guys, that you, you share this, share it. Even, even after the fact, tomorrow you share it. Let people watch when we have the experts on so everybody can be educated and informed. Well, you know, I, I took a look today I, for the first time in a long time. I had a chance to walk the um, outer perimeter of the, the uh, concourse at the Lihue Airport. And, and, and you know, you folks can do that. It's, 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 not, a, it's not considered an area that you, you cannot be walking around. You, you can, but just 
if you were from, I, I mean, it, it's part of my job. And, you know, if anybody see me down the airport, you would see me with a mask on the entire time. And usually I pull, you know, I get in anywhere between four to five o'clock in the morning and I stay in all the way to about six, seven at night but tonight because I knew we were coming on. But I, I'm mentioning this because if you could see the amount of people, now regardless of whether they're wearing a mask or not, but I have to say most of them are, but just the bodies of people moving, okay, how fluid it is. There is no way I see social distancing. It's like, you know, they have little, those little um, stickers on the ground that says, keep your distance, right? It's not being followed because it can't. There's just so many people. They're packed like sardines. So just imagine now. Just imagine. That's what coming into your island, Maui. I looked at the, the, the load on Maui, how much they are getting, right? Sometimes 13,000 over the weekend, 14,000 people. Can you just imagine how many people that is? How, how many bodies? Now, I'm not saying they all come in at one time, but a good majority are, are bulked. They're bulked coming in through those, uh, those lobby areas. That's a lot. <laughs> and I, I, I'm laughing not at anyone or at a situation. It's just my laughter now is like a nervous twitch because if it explodes at any time, and that's the reason why if you, I use an example like a fire department, they keep up with the trend because they always have new types of fires that erupt, not your standard brush fire or because there's different materials, right? So now they have to keep up with the, the new ways of fighting fires. And so that's why monies are spent for all these fire trucks. I think we should start doing that with our health. We need to find ways to mitigate and stop the spread. And that's why Mel and I we get very frustrated when we hear things such as they want, no, no matter what happens, we're going to lift the mass mandate. No matter what happens. Okay. What about what's happening now? Do you care about that? Or you don't care about that? It seems to me people in high places really don't care about it. And so let me ask you if it should affect personally one of your family members. Would you take a different attitude? Ah, uh, I think our our illustrious uh, LG, I think he would have a different viewpoint if one of his family got stricken with this. But again, you know, he's a medical professional. He knows right from wrong. So, you know, Mel, I just want to say, I can see your frustration. I feel for you, brother. But I also worry about your health. And you know what? At this point, while it, while it feels good at times to blow up, we got to worry about our health. Because right now, it's like throwing darts from a distance, right? And all I'm saying is, yeah, you can avoid those darts. But guess what? At one given point in time, those darts are going to get really, really close. And all it takes one to nail you. And so is with this virus. It will get really, really close. And I'm not saying that we're complacent. But we, we put 100% on the vaccine, how we feel. And I got vaccinated, but I'm still cautious. I'm still cautious. And, you know, I, I, I just hope and pray all of you take that same path. Because these numbers are mind-boggling. It's staggering. I remember now, when this happened before, during the middle of the pandemic, the governor... Everyone had no problem shutting their state down. Okay. Even the numbers are lower than this, shutting their state down. Look what's happening now. Not a peep. So that's why I am concerned. What is their medical approach to letting this thing run wild? Are they taking the approach that it's going to burn itself out? The numbers are clearly, the last couple of days, I don't know about you folks, but maybe uh, the numbers continually started to climb. So it's, it's nowhere near burning itself out. That's why I would like to know 
that the position that the Department of Health is taking, I hear a lot of messaging. Wear your mask, social distancing, blah, 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 blah. Okay. But what hard, tangible procedures are in place that we're gonna we're gonna fight this thing head on? That's what gets me mad. Because I see nothing over the horizon. Nothing. Well, uh, you know, I think, Charlie, you're right. Um, I mean, you're on target. And, you know, Dr. Behrman, our Kauai District Health Office, let me just, let me just read her quote. Again, this is not Mel or Charlie. It says, what we are seeing is rapid and exponential rise, and it is showing no signs of diminishing. It is continuing to increase, Janet Behrman, Kauai District Health Officer said. The fact that the Delta variant is so much more highly transmissible means we do need to be expecting continued rapid increase in case counts. That's straight out of the Department of Health. Thank God we have a health officer on Kauai that is not afraid to speak the truth uh, and at least put people on notice and warning that this is not going to go away. Um, and if we don't do take proactive action. If we just sit back and wait, look at what's happening at the other states in our country. Look at what's happening and why would we think that we would be any different? We're not. We are the same. This variant is, works the same whether you're in Texas or Florida or Honolulu, Hawaii or Kauai. It's the same. And many of those places, vaccination rates are low. Many of our communities vaccination rates are low. The fact that we're at 60% or 59 point whatever, it doesn't mean every, every community in our state is at that level. So, you know, it's just time for people to be real. And, um, and you know, Lieutenant Governor, I don't have a pathological obsession with you. Uh, I don't need help. What I have is a passion for this place that I live in. What I have is the strong desire to get as much factual information as I possibly can as a lay person and share it with whoever wants to listen. That's my passion. So no, I don't have a pathological obsession with you. Uh, and the reason I bring that up is because I just got a text from him that said that. He just texted me five minutes ago when he was talking Charlie and said that I have a pathological obsession against him and I should get some help. Do I take offense? No, I expect that from you, Lieutenant Governor. I hope you can appreciate my passion for this place, my passion for keeping people safe, my passion for listening to experts that are, are tracking this virus and this variant from across the world in this country and have stepped up and stepped out and made their observations and their research available. Th that's my passion. I don't know, I'm not offended based on that text because, because I consider the source. Uh, the darts, Charlie, is so ironic as you were talking about darts gonna get closer. Yeah, there the dart hit, the dart hit. But to call me a pathological or pathologically obsessed with you, Lieutenant Governor, don't give yourself so much credit, bro. Do me a favor, cite the study that disputes Dr. Altenberg. Cite the study that disputes what Dr. Miskovich is saying. Cite the study that says what Dr. Behrman is saying is not true. Cite the studies that are dis disputing all of the facts and numbers and statistics that are coming from across the country, from states that are getting demolished by this variant. No, I am not pathologically obsessed with you, my friend. Never have been, never will. Whether I'm gonna get some help, I'll get some help. I'll talk to Charlie tonight after the, after the show. Charlie's my consultant, my psychologist, my psychiatrist. And then I'll talk to my wife and I'll be perfectly fine after a nice little cup of cocoa and some arare. Okay, uh so let me just say it again, not pathologically obsessed with you doc and I ain't getting help. And the show will continue continue until the variant and this COVID is under control. Sorry for the rant, bro. That one caught me by surprise. No, but, no don't, man, don't be that sorry. That blew don't me be... away. That blew me away.
Don't be sorry. Remember one thing now. We're all entitled to our opinion, right? But when you go deep six and you throw out texts like that, then, you know, remember back in the old days, if somebody called you out. No, I, I think he, you know, it could be he's expressing frustration, you know, because, you know, a lot of us may not be agreeing with him. But you know why, you know why we don't agree? It's plain and simple. We didn't make up the damn numbers. That's why we don't agree. We didn't make up the numbers. If we made up the numbers, then hey, shame on us. The numbers are given to us like it was given to all our viewers, right? Those are confirmed numbers of uh, uh, cases, number of cases. So all we're saying is, how do we eradicate those numbers or how do we stamp it out? What do we do? Do we go on a hiatus? We can't even do that. We can't even get a lockdown to bring this thing under control. So how are we supposed to do it? It's like when you get a flu, we can't give you any medication. Just suck it up until the, the flu leaves you. Who said it's gonna leave us? The numbers alone is telling us it's climbing. <laughs> Am I not right now? Am I not right? You're all right. I gotta breathe a little bit. Um, I gotta admit, I uh, it's starting to sink in. I'm now I'm getting angry. So the timing is right. Uh, we're gonna call it a night for now, guys. We're gonna go and post that um, that that um, uh, shit, man. I'm all jammed up right now. Uh, only because I'm so angry and frustrated. <laughs> but I'm gonna post the stream up if I can. If not, guys, go to my page. Go to that little posting I did. There's the link to the the the, the, the stream or go to PBS. And we'll see you guys right after the PBS show. Be on the lookout, guys. And do me a favor. Do me a favor. Share the crap out of the post show tonight. And share the crap out of tomorrow's show with Dr. Lee Altenberg, uh, who may have a pathological obsession as well. I don't know. Anyway, guys, we'll see you guys in a little bit. Love you guys. Take care. God bless. See you in a bit.